Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Mid Wales. The sun is absolutely glorious today. Um, I can't believe how lovely it is, finally. It's the middle of June and we're finally getting a bit of summer. So I'm sat under the shade of my favourite tree in the veg garden. Um, I thought I'd come out and show you the hens. And because it's such a glorious day, I thought I would do a garden tour for you and show you around my garden. Um, I know I talk about it a lot and I have filmed in the garden as well. So we've got so many foxgloves. Yeah, it's beautiful. As I say, I'm sitting under the shade of this tree because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, there's a lot of banging at the back because the gentleman's sorting out the beehives. I'm not sure. I may have to run at some point because I think some of the bees may be about to swarm and they tend to come over the garden when they do and go up into the trees behind me. So uh, if I have to run, then you know why. But uh, at the moment, everything seems quite calm. They came on Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday when we came back from church and I came and looked out the window and there was uh, lots of bees flying around the flowers so I think that's where they came from. You may be able to hear some clicking in the background, I hope you could hear that, but that's uh, one of the grass snakes or the adders that we get here in Mid Wales. They do come out in sort of June, July time in the garden because of the long grass that's in the field behind me. You may be able to spot the cows up there, the cows have come back down the hill um, and everything feels very summery all of a sudden, like the lazy days of summer that we should be having at this time of year. So, yeah, so I'll just turn you around and we'll get on with the garden tour. I will start up with the chickens um, and then we'll work our way down and up into the flower garden. I'll show you around the veg garden. It's a bit messy at the moment because uh, I've been doing a lot of weeding so I can get my flowers, my plants in, my vegetable plants that I've got to go in. So you just have to excuse the mess. But I just wanted to seize the day and make the most of the weather. So yeah, I'll just show you the beautiful sky that we've got. Yeah, we'll start off at the potting shed and next door, next door to that is the uh, chickens. So when they're out in their little area here, I can keep an eye on them, um, which is really handy. And also when I'm down the path, down the other end of the garden by the house, I can see them because this area here is seen from down by the house. Um, and the chickens have allowed out in all this bit here. I've got a fence up there and it's quite high. And that's just because the new hens have just moved in and I don't want them getting too adventurous around the garden and going off into the fields beyond because I'll never get them back. And also there's, um, there's a fox that used to live in those trees there and I don't know if he's still there so I don't want to take the chance. So I just keep them in a small area where I can keep an eye on them until I get their little tunnels built which is going to come in a video on my other channel. Here's the hens. This is Pippa, she's the one that was left on her own when Poppy died, so she's now the matriarch. And then these are the three new ones. Uh, this little white one, white lighter coloured one is Daisy, and as yet I haven't given the others a name, um, the other two a name, because I can't think of what to call them at the moment, so until that they're called the little ones. Um, so they can come out. Door to them is my fruit cage and in here I have red, white and black currants. I also have some gooseberries and the elderly gentleman that lived in the house before we moved in, he'd been here for over 40 years and he planted all this fruit. So in order to stop the birds pinching all the fruit, I have um, built this fruit cage and I've just built it out of old branches from the trees that we had cut down at the back. Tied it with some bits of uh, old leggings just to tie it together uh, until I can get some proper string. And uh, yeah, it seems to be doing the trick, no problem. I've also mulched the bottom to keep down the grass. I've just got this bit here to carry on with, um, which I didn't get a chance to finish before my back was bad. So excuse the noise, there's a helicopter going over. can see the fruit just there, some black currants coming through. Then we'll come down here into the shade of my tree 
my favourite tree. I think it's a hornbeam and there's not many of them left around now so I pop my bench under there and that's where I sit and I can spin there as well. That tree there is a gardenia tree. A lot of people say it's a magnolia tree but I don't think it is. Um, people say it's a magnolia stellata but it doesn't have magnolia flowers on it so yeah I think it's a gardenia because it has lovely white flowers on it. Um, from the veg garden that's the view across the field at the back that I do put in my videos. Along this hedge line here is some food and I've got um, this is an Ikea berry which does have some berries on it at the moment. Um, next to that this stick here which is still alive is a sea buckthorn and then further along there's a rather sad looking black elderflower so I think I need to take that out and give it a drink. Then here is a rather sad looking gooseberry bush and then along again goji berry and a goji berry. So this is what I'm, I call my fedge, my food hedge. So, and then here is my veg bed which goes from the polytunnel. I've got rhubarb all along the back, along, all the way to the greenhouse. And then here I've got strawberries. There is some fruit and some flowers in there somewhere but they've got really overgrown so they do need thinning out. But this is where my food's going that I've bought to go in. It's just a bit hot at the moment so I'm going to do it later on when the sun disappears around the trees. This is beautiful, this is a parsley, this here, um, and it's all gone to seed. There's flower heads on it now, so I'm going to leave them and harvest the seeds for use in cooking. This purple flower here is my sage, um, and then along here, this is my rosemary, it had beautiful blue flowers on it in the spring. Incidentally, this border here is where I did the video footage of all those yellow flowers filled with, and it was covered in bees. This is what this border was like, just covered in those yellow flowers. That's the last little bit of it left. Um, and it was all brassicas that have gone to seed. So uh, yeah, they've all come out now. There's just the odd few left, which have got some leaves on that I can use in the house. And this one here is a Russian kale, so I've left that in because I want the seeds. Um, so yeah, round this side here, Around this side here is my other food hedge and because as you can see we're just down then into the fields at the bottom. Um, so this is a honeyberry and then I've got another five of these I think. I've got one there and then I've got a buddleia. This one here is very interesting. I've not seen this leaf before and I've no idea what the flower is so I'm just going to leave it because it put itself there so see what it does and then again down here and amongst the nettles got another honeyberry and then I'm not sure what this is but it's got beautiful lantern flowers on it it's absolutely gorgeous and the bees love it so this can stay because it provides a good bit of a screen we've got lots of crickets so um, yeah I think the grasshoppers actually at the moment in the garden clicking their legs together. This is a peony which belonged to the elderly gentleman who uh, lived in the house before us. It's just finished so there's the seed head off it. It's gorgeous as still be which is absolutely full of, bat of bees and bugs and hoverflies and you name it it's in there. It's just all of a sudden opened out. It was like a green lime green colour yesterday and it's just all of a sudden opened out. It's absolutely beautiful. So yeah that's staying. Um, so this is the other side of that bush and then we've got another honeyberry there, another honeyberry there, then another buddleia and another honeyberry. So and this is the buddleia. And these are the plants that I've got to go in, some tomatoes, some rosemary and some courgettes. And then round here, gorgeous euphorbia by the way. That's a wild, that's a wild flower as well. Um, yeah, then round past all the vegetables. This is great. This is um, a walking stick kale, 
I put that in last year, it was a little spindly thing. I thought the slugs had had the worst of it and uh, no, it seems to have come back. So round past to the greenhouse, this is my greenhouse. And I've got some more plants to go in down here. This is a passion fruit. More courgettes and squashes in that basket there. And then this is my Gertrude Jekyll Rose. She smells absolutely delicious this year. Shame it's not smell-o-vision. Um, Foxgloves galore. I've got some herbs here. Some chives. Thornless blackberry. And that one is a comfrey. And that's been full of bees as well. And then this is my greenhouse with my tomatoes in. Excuse the mess. We're having a bad back. Um, I've not really been very tidy this year. Some gorgeous California poppies in here. And this is my strawberry tree. This one here, which I've mentioned in my food uh, forest video. And it seems to be growing really well this year. It's got some lovely new growth on it, so it seems very happy. Um, and then through my arch, this is my flower garden section. Um, so I'll show you around here. So underneath the window of the house here, I had a box of wildflower seeds last year. And this is the results of it coming back again this year. It is absolutely amazing. It looks just like it should do on the box. Um, I've got poppies, California poppies, proper ones. Daisies, foxgloves. More foxgloves there. Um, that is a plant that I put in this one here. This is called Canterbury Bells. Don't know what that is. I think it's stock. I think this one's stock. This one here is a Canterbury Bells and it's absolutely gorgeous. And then I just love this little bit here. With the daisies and the poppies and my rose. This is my porch where I sit and do my spinning. Um, this border here is mainly irises, but this year we just have a mountain of foxgloves. Um, I have a dyer's chamomile, which is just starting to come into flower for dyeing wool. Um, there's two there. And then I have flag iris. I don't know what that's doing there, but I have an allium bulb there as well. Um, and there were iris... Um, yeah, irises in here that I'd bought, which don't seem to have flowered. This one was very pretty, but it seems to have finished now. It's a trumpet flower. And then I've got geraniums. And then I've got more daisies. I've got a little tiny pond in there, which needs a bit of a clean. Hasn't been cleaned yet. And this is a fleece that I've put out to dry because it's felted already. So I'm going to do some footage of what I'm going to do with that in a little while. And I'll put that in this video or another video. Um, and then this bank here was dahlias and peonies. Which it was only started this border last year. All this here that I've just shown you was only started last year. It was all grass right up to the house and it was really difficult to mow and I was concerned about the damp on the walls in the house so yeah I put, decided to put borders in so this border here is new this was just grass um, see what else I can show you this one here is a Dyer's Coreopsis so that'll be getting harvested for the dye pot I've got heather along there as well. And this rose here was my birthday present last year off my parents, my mum and dad. And this one is Roald Dahl. Again, another David Austin. I just love these old roses. Isn't it beautiful? And this seems to have spread everywhere. I think this is stock. This is a magnolia tree. Beautiful white flowers on it. I did some video footage of that as well for one of my videos. It's my oil tank screen that I made from branches. And then this border here is all new as well because all this was a hedge all the way down there and then right round the garden. And then 
it went all the way along there to that hedge at the bottom and now it's just full of foxgloves. It's gorgeous. This is another border with the bird feeders which needs weeding at the moment but I don't know whether you can hear the bees. This gorgeous white hedge here is my Deutzia and it's full of honeybees at the moment. It looks gorgeous. And I've got spire ear next to that. And then again, just loads of foxgloves where the hedge was taken out. This yellow daisy here, I'm going to try in the dye pot, this one. I think that was a Morrison's plant for about a pound. More foxgloves. And then these are really strange. These, these here. These are marigolds and uh, they were from last year and they're just supposed to be annuals and if I deadhead them I'm sure I'll get more flowers if I take the seed heads off and yes you can use them in the dye pot as well so I'm going to take all the seed heads off them just leave them on the ground this is beautiful and then this is my new perennial border here which I showed you in my last video Again, masses of foxgloves, there's that loop in. And then this is the path up to the um, shed, new shed, well, renovated shed. And then I've got more, more Dyer's Coreopsis here, just coming into flower. I've got Achillea, which brings in the bees, which is good for my vegetables. More geranium. And then this is my patch of uh, flocks, which I'm just waiting for the flowers to come. And this lovely yellow flower here is beautiful. I do have uh, Euphorbia and Rudbeckia in here somewhere as well. There's also Asters. So yeah, then we come round again. This is that Azalea that was in flower that's finished. That's another Azalea. And then we're at the potting shed and the chickens again. This is that camellia. And then this is another gateway with another rose and a clematis on it. And then this takes you to the top garden. This is a clematis, which I put in last year. Again, a Morrison's plant from the supermarket. And then this side here, I have my dad's rose, which we're not sure if this is Dublin or Ruby um, for the Ruby wedding anniversary which I bought them when they were in their other house. This is where little poppies buried. And this is the beginning of uh, my food forest, which I talk about in my first video that I put up on YouTube. And um, this is where I do the fruit trees with um, flowers. This tree here is a pear tree. It got blown out by the wind, so uh, it's not looking very happy at the moment. Um, and then in here, I have another rose, this one's called Buttercup, this is also David Austin, and some rhododendrons. That tree there is called a chilly lantern tree, and then the big one behind it is a Douglas fir. Here are the bees now, so I'm going to have to be careful. This plant here was also from um, Morrison's, and it's a perennial cornflower, and I love them. I've not seen it that colour before, I've got purple ones, but that's a new one from last year. And then round here, excuse all the mess, that's from when the trees were cut down in the autumn. This is my little woodland border, which has got um, hostas, rhododendrons and a few other bits and bobs in there that I didn't know where to put, in, put them. There's the hostas there, there's all the way along there to the end, to that other tree. That clear area there is where the polytunnel's going. And then this side here is also food and flowers, which needs finishing off. It needs a lot of work doing on it. Yes, I do have things to go in. So, yeah. So in here, in this border here, I have currants. I have apples to go in. Um, along the hedge line there, I've got a bay. That one there's a bay. 
the bay leaf and then I put some hedging plants in as well um, to try and build a screen from that because that's where all the bees are in there and then you come along this is a field maple I've got two of those this is my rose arch I built that last year with branches off the trees and then in front of that here is another flower border with fruit in this has got apple trees in it it's got two apple trees in this one and then there was an arch here and that needs putting back up and then there's the view again and the cows so there's just one more little bit which is the old barn so we'll go through the rose arch fence that I built out of tree branches um, off the trees in the garden this is mainly laurel um, the laurel trees that we had in the back because all this here all used to just be laurel trees and it's all been taken out since I uh, moved in 18 months ago so this rose here is a wild rose off my parents out of their garden and then yet more foxgloves and loads of them I have been moving some plants around like this one if they do look a bit dead we just haven't had a lot of rain this rose here is again another David Austin this one's called Pilgrim so that one's getting trained up there it's been beautiful flowers and then along here pampas grass another rose an acer there's also food along there, apple and cherry um, and then more flowers <laughs> more of those foxgloves there's also um, plum in here that one there is a plum um, and then yes there's just lots of foxgloves there is other apples, there is another apple tree in here there's a jewel apple tree and another apple tree and then there's currant bushes as well this wall here is an old barn building which was the highlight of the garden for me when we got this house um, I'm going to restore this into an area to sit where I can spin and weave and my husband can sit and read his book and yeah it's going to be a great area when I've finished it. I've got a pergola to go in there which is what this wood is here and um, there's a beautiful wisteria on it this is the wisteria there it's gorgeous against the stonework of this wall here it's beautiful um, and then the wall does need rebuilding because we get rabbits coming through there so yeah we had a bee swarm in that roof last year so it hindered me from doing it so I'm hoping once I've got the garden vegetable garden planted that uh, I can get in here and get this wall done and get it done by the autumn but you know me, <laughs> I got the shed done pretty quickly so <laughs> um, and then this is the arch down to the woodland bit which takes you back into the front of the house just here this is my rambling rector which is going to be moved because I, um, I want to see the flowers so I've got a jasmine to go here, a white one to fill the space and then down here which is mainly fruit and this absolutely beautiful rose which I can see from the kitchen look at that flower it's been gorgeous, it's been flowering now for about three weeks look at that and then all the way along there again it's foxgloves and then that's back down to the garden to the view incidentally this fence here I found where the polytunnel's going and I had to dig it all out because it was in the way of the polytunnel so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it black and white in keeping with what it would have been painted when it was put in um, and I'm going to grow my apples along it um, as cordons 
that's kind of a hedge because then I'll, in, I'll get the blossom because I've got apples here. Yeah, these are Bramley apples and the blossom was absolutely beautiful and I can see it from my kitchen window. Um, so what I thought was along this hence he fence here I would uh, grow these fruit trees. I've got one, two, three, four, I've got five trees along this fence. So I thought that that would be a good way to do it. And if I need to get any more height, I can always add it to the fence post. So yeah, I've also got roses along here. This is what I call my rose walk. I've got that yellow one that I've just shown you. I've got one here that I found in the veg garden. And then I've got currant bushes. And I've got, I need to get in and weeds, but with having a bad back, I haven't been able to bend down. I've got another rose here. I've got this one here, which is Peace, called Peace. Another apple, which is another Bramley apple. And then I've got cherries, and I have actually got cherries. The birds haven't eaten them <laughs> yet. And then more foxgloves. This one here is a pear. And then this one here is another apple with another rambling rose and then we're back at the oil tank so yeah that's my garden when you come round past the oil tank again this is then a circle and it brings you back here and this border we went past before and the magnolia tree and this beautiful clematis just here so yeah, that's the garden. Right, okay, so that was the tour of the garden. Um, I've come back down now into the vegetable garden under the shade of the tree because it's gone really, really warm. I thought I'd come down here and do a couple of jobs before um, I go and do the tea. And I thought that I would just show you what I'm going to be getting up to. So, yeah, I've found this. This here. Which was a gift that was given to us by some friends. Um couple of years ago about three years ago now and I've not known what to do with it um, um, they brought it back from Nepal when they went out there for six months and it's a beautiful picture um, don't know whether you can see the little farmer going back into his house and it was actually done by somebody that they met when they were out there so yeah they had they actually thought of us when they were there so that was really nice so yeah, it's quite special, so I thought that I would try and do something with it and either pop it up in the house or pop it up in the shed so that we can see it when we sit in there. Um, so what I've got is, I've got some driftwood here and I thought that I would pop one on the top and one on the bottom um, and then pop a piece of string on it and uh, pop it up in the house because I, I quite like the arc on that one. Um, and it takes it away from the actual thing itself. So, yeah, so I thought that would be quite nice. So what I've got is, I've got some strong thread and a needle. So I'm going to put a few stitches through um, and attach the driftwood to the picture and then pop it up on the wall. So that's one of the things that I've got. Um, and I've got some footage for you of a Hebridean rug a fleece that uh, I found in my stash in the garage and I thought that I would make it into a rug or a seat pad for the shed. Um, it'll do for the shed in the summer and then maybe in the winter it can come into the house. So I was going to pop it on Etsy but I rather like it and I'm terrible really. I get all these things and then I just don't want to part with them and they never end up going in my shop and I end up having them in my house. So what I thought was, that was what I'd do with this. So this is the fleece. 
and I've got some footage of you of what I want to do which I'll just insert here now. This is the Hebridean rug that I found in the garage that I posted on Instagram. Um, it's a felted rug that's come off the sheep felted. Um, it's got some beautiful colours in it and I thought that I would do it for the shed for the floor. It's got a hole in it and that really is the only hole. There's a few here at the sides. So what I thought I would do is sew up the holes and that way I can then pop it in the washing machine on a slow spin and try and get it to felt together a little bit more and then use it in my shed. It's a beautiful fleece. I'm just hoping it's not going to shrink too much but uh, if I put it on a five minute wash it should be okay but uh, that's the nature of the game really. I could spend time felting the back but I don't have any more of the Hebridean because I spun it up last year. Um, so yeah I thought I would have a go of sewing the back and then popping it in the washing machine so see how it goes. So I'll just go over to the shade and then I'll meet you back there in a minute. Right so as you can see um, the fleece does actually need a bit of repairing doing to it. So there's one of the holes. Um, so what I thought was I would sit under the shade of the tree and stitch up the holes and then pop it in the washing machine and see how it turns out. So that's another job that I've got to do today. So uh, yeah. So. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the tour around the garden. I hope you've enjoyed the sunshine and the sound of the bees and the birds because there's an awful lot of wildlife around here today. There's adders, there's bees, there's birds, there's, and there's even aeroplanes as well. I was just about to switch the camera on and three American fighter jets threw, flew straight over the garden. So glad I wasn't in the middle of filming. But uh, I can still hear them around in the background, so uh, I'm going to sign off now and get on with my job. So in the next video I'll show you how the picture turned out and I'll show you how the rug turned out. So I hope you're enjoying the summer sunshine, uh, whatever you're doing. I hope you've got a nice cup of coffee or tea to enjoy, or whatever your preference is. And uh, that you've got some crafting to do. So I'm just going to go and get on with mine. And I will see you next time. If you do like my videos, please do like and subscribe uh, to keep up to date with what I'm getting on with here. I do do a lot of varied crafts and I'm sure that you'll find something that you enjoy uh, listening to or watching. Um, and I would love to see you around here. So please do leave comments in the comment section below. And I will answer you as soon as I see them, as soon as I uh, come across your comments. So thanks again for joining me and enjoy your weekend, which is coming up now. And uh, I will see you next time. So bye for now. Bye.